Hi everybody, my name is Solvay Waterfall. I'm a backcountry skiing and climbing guide, um, an avalanche educator, and a firefighter EMT um, based out of Washington State. Um, I've been skiing my whole life. I started backcountry skiing um, when I was in college um, and climbing uh, in a little bit in high school and in college um, mostly as well. Um, and I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about my sport, um, what I do for fun, um, and also what I do for work, because oftentimes my job requires that I work in um, a high stress dynamic um, and uh, sometimes high risk environment. Um, and those things can create um, stress that can lead to anxiety. And um, I wanna share with you some of the tools that I use to help manage that um, and keep myself um, feeling um, as calm and um, able to think clearly um, and uh, do my job. And the um, gifts that the, the mountains have given me um, and uh, the reason that I go back year after year and, um, and spend time outside. So um, the Courage Project asked me to talk to you today and I'm super grateful to be able to be a part of this um, and to speak with you and, and share my story. Um, so I guess just to start, um, yeah, I've been, been skiing and, and climbing for a long time. Um, I've had the pleasure of working as a mountain guide on Mount Rainier and um, on big peaks around the world. Um, I've climbed Mount Rainier 137 times um, and uh, it's just been a pleasure every single time. Um, and I, I truly I truly like that mountain um, and I enjoy climbing and skiing and playing on the lower, the lower reaches of the park as well. So I live here in Washington State. Um, I'm based here full time now, I spent years um, down in California um, as well. I ski patrolled on um, Squaw Valley um, and guided on Mount Shasta as well. And I've done um, quite a bit of international guiding work um, in, the, in the alpine climbing world. Um, ski guided up in Alaska and I also um, did, did um, six Denali trips over the years. So I spent some time working on the Alaska range also. Um, and all of those places um, and all the, the mountain ranges that I worked um, are really special. And I think, you know, when I first started climbing um, and skiing, um, kind of outside of the ski area um, environment and, and kind of getting into the backcountry, um, it really, um, the thing that really brought me back time and again was kind of this idea that I could, I could train for skiing and I could do all of the homework and I could um, I could obsess about all the minutia um, but every time I went back every time that I skied that same run or I went back to that same peak um, the environment was changing I was a dynamic world and um, I couldn't always prepare for every single thing I could do my best I could um, do all my homework have a great tour plan um, but there was always kind of that unknown element and that was um, really it still is really exciting exciting for me um, and I think uh, that's just something that's always kind of drawn me in is kind of this um, this uh, unknown. Um, what's the what's the variable that I, I can't see and that I can't predict? So um, with climbing, um, it's similar, especially um, you know rock climbing. You can go to the gym and you can train, and you can get really strong, um, and you can go back and you can do the same route. And oftentimes the moves are going to be the same, and you can practice and you can get. Um, really, really good um, until you can just, you know, have those have those moves dialed and almost climb it in your sleep. Um, and so that's really rewarding and I really enjoy that aspect of kind of the training process and then moving into the mountains and you kind of put that all together and alpine climbing is this whole different ball game where there's so many more variables. Um, um, the mountains are have a way of teaching us, kind of humbling us um, when we think we've prepared and done all of the work. Um, and we've shown up in our very, very best. Sometimes we're rewarded and, and sometimes we go home um, with a few more lessons to learn and um, some things to practice um, for our next, our next round, our next, um, our next challenge. So um, because I work as a firefighter now um, full time, um, my schedule currently is about 20% oh, guiding and teaching avalanche courses in the mountains and about 80% of my, uh, my work life is spent as a firefighter and an EMT. Um, and that's also very dynamic. Um, every day is different. Calls are different. Um, you never know what you're going to, what you're going to get called out to. Um, and I find that really exciting as well. So, um, there's the, there's the joy that I get from that and the, and the fun, um, but then it also comes hand in hand with um, 
with stress. And so one of the things I want to talk to you guys about is how I manage that and some of the tools that I use on to deal with um, uncertainty because that really is um, kind of the essence of where anxiety comes from or, or where we have this these um, stresses in our, where we feel stress when we're in the mountains or when we're at work or um, even if it's just um, kind of in your daily routine, going to the grocery store or, um, you know, going out to pick up the mail. Um, and when we don't understand the environment, when we don't feel like we have all the information, um, it's called what we call a high degree of uncertainty. So when uncertainty increases, um, our stress level increases and ways we can manage that um, are by um, decreasing our exposure um, primarily and then doing our homework and preparing more. So um, I spend a lot of time on um, doing research, um, practicing. Um, I trade practicing my craft, getting as strong, working on my body, working on my mind, meditating, um, doing yoga, um, exercising, um, and just trying to get myself into a place where I have um, more bandwidth, I have a more space um, in my head to, um, to accommodate those challenges and those tasks and um, kind of uh, decisions that I'm gonna have to make when I'm out in the field. So yeah, um, yoga and, um, and meditation have been really, um, really important for me um, as I work to kind of quiet my mind, um, it's always thinking about, oh, what's what's gonna be the next thing that you haven't thought of, or how's the how's the snow conditions gonna be in the morning, or you know, is the wind gonna gonna change things overnight? To what degree? How much um, effect is there gonna be from the UV radiation? What's the surface gonna look like? Um, or you know, when I'm at work at the fire department, um, you know, what's the what kind of patients are we going to see? Um, are we going to go to a structure fire? Is it going to be a commercial building or is it going to be a single family home? Um, and you know, there's just kind of an endless um, loop that my mind can run, <laughs> run if I, uh, if I let it. And so um, working to find those tools that can kind of bring you back to center and keep you grounded are really important. So um, one of the things um, that's helped me, um, you know, in, in the challenges that I've faced with um, getting my ski guide certification through the AMGA, that was a, a um, really um, challenging process and um, very rewarding and I'm, I'm, I'm super proud of um, all of the work that I did and put into that to um, achieve that certification. Um, and then um, getting hired with the fire department and going through the academy um, and keeping my body healthy and passing all the tests and um, the long process that it took to, to get hired over over 18 months um, to from kind of the start of it to the to um, being um, fully um, kind of on um, as a a um, vested or vetted firefighter, um, and so through that process, um, I you know over the years I've also had a number of injuries. I've um, hurt my ankle, I've hurt my shoulders, um, and those have kind of been some setbacks and some challenges that I've had to work through as well, um, and. Um, as I work through those challenges, I, um, I've, you know, oftentimes come back to um, kind of this, um, this moment of quiet and um, what can I do? How can I, um, how can I control what I can control? How can I um, be the best at the things that I have the ability to be good at, that I can, the, the things that I can control, what can I do to um, be at the top of my game um, for those things. And if I can just be good at those things, then um, I know that I've done my very best. So um, there's a, a quote that I, um, that I read when I was recovering from my ankle surgery, um, and it really resonated with me. And I've thought of it often as I've um, been uh, moving through these uh, challenges and dealing with some of the stress of testing and, um, and um, you know, just, um, a high stress work environment. And so it's a quote by Viktor Frankl, and it goes like this, um, between stimulus and response, there is space. And in that space is your ability to choose your response. And in your response lies your growth and your freedom. And I really like that. I really like that it kind of reminds you that you're not just, um, you're not just the sum of um, 
the things that you do and the things that you accomplish and the mountains that you climb and the lines that you ski and you know the trails that you run and um, you know the the medals that you get but um, you're also tested and kind of um, um, you, you're You can find value in the way that you respond to the things that happen to you. And I think it's really important to just take a moment and just kind of remember that the things that happen to you are nothing that you can control. You can't control other people's actions. You can't control the environment. You can't control traffic. You can't um, control um the weather all of that stuff sitting in a tent um at the you know at base camp and it's raining and nasty and the wind's blowing and all you want to do is climb and then go home and hang out with your family and um there's there's nothing that you're going to do about that weather all you can do is stay in a good headspace um and keep yourself healthy and happy and um focus on the things um that you um, that you have going for you and that are eventually going to get you to the point where you can go send it and um, have a great day on the summit or not um, and then um, go home healthy and safe. So um, that's something that I've come back to um, quite a bit to work on remembering that um, I need to um, be accountable and um, kind of be um, mindful of my, my own actions and my own reactions. Um, and so in working with kind of this, um, this idea of a meditation or yoga, if that's a new thing for you, um, I encourage you to kind of explore that and, and play with the, the benefits of, um, of meditation. Um, and if anything, just start to pay attention to your breath. Um, the breath is so important. It ties us, it's tied into everything that we do. I mean, athletics, climbing, skiing, running, um, yoga of course um our, our breath is a really powerful tool and we we often kind of forget that um sometimes we even hold our breath when we get really stressed out and, and nervous and you know i've been taking tests and all of a sudden i had to remind myself oh man you gotta like breathe why are you, you know why are you so stressed out oh it's just because um well you're not breathing so take a breath um and um yeah breathing if you can control your breath you can control your mind and if you can control your mind, you can control your body. And if you can control your body, you can control your actions. And if you can control your actions, then that's, that's all the power that you need, right? Um, that's all you need to do, not all you need to have um, to be able to be your best self um, in any moment, to just, to just do your best, right? That's, all, that's the most the best that you can do um, at any given time is all is all that you can ask of yourself. So that might mean um, just sitting and taking a breath, counting for a few minutes, and then responding, um, taking some time to yourself, going to, to kind of um, regroup and um, and then come back to whatever it is that you were doing before, um, and eventually being able to harness. Um, your breath and your um, kind of mindfulness to put that to work um, in your activities in the mountains and running and climbing and helping you to be focused to climb and be able to control your body to pull the moves and um, you know really be able to um, be the athlete that you want to be if that's what you choose to do um, and um, kind of uh, yeah have just a, a great experience and a safe experience um, out in the mountains and um, let the let the mountains and the wilderness teach you all the, the beautiful lessons of life. <laughs> um, thank you very much for letting me talk to you today. Um, I hope you um, 